Call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance in prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We pray. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Grant that we who came from many nations with many different languages may become a united people. Support us in defending our liberties and give those to whom we have entrusted the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, may our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Roll call is taken. We had uh, Supervisor Agamite, Supervisor Mastelier, and Supervisor Patricia asked to be excused. Supervisor Haskey. She has not asked to be, did she uh, contact? Okay, well, perhaps she'll be in yet uh, as we go. All right, so roll call taken. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Uh, Supervisor Kinnard made a motion, seconded by Supervisor Augustine. Is there any discussion on the motion to approve the agenda? Uh, we. You may register your vote. Sixteen yes, none opposed. Motion carries. Would look for a motion to approve the previous county board minutes. And I have a motion from Supervisor Swaggle and a second from Supervisor Kroll. Is there any discussion on the minutes which you have reviewed? Seeing none, you may register your vote. 16 yes, none opposed. The motion carries. Citizens input. Do we have anyone who wishes to speak to the board this evening? Yes. The board will hear concerns members of the public wish to raise, but will not discuss or take action on any matter until the matter can be placed on an agenda with proper notice to the public. The board welcomes citizens to present their concerns to the board in a professional manner relevant to issues affecting Kiwani County. Each citizen may take three minutes to present their concern and the board has allotted a total of 20 minutes for this portion of the meeting. Please be mindful the board may halt any disruptive comments and any comments that are threatening, vulgar or abusive. Joseph Young. Mr. Young, would you uh, please uh, step to the microphone there so that uh, everyone can hear you? Yes, I'm Joseph Young. I boarded the ATV park, and this has been an ongoing thing. I started back with Dave Rice, you know, with the concerns of the erosion, and they're running up and down the ravines, and I, I can't see how it's being allowed because you're you're supposed to set an example for everybody around you, and I don't see it. You have the farmers; they have to put cover crops and everything for erosion. The guy that vents my land does it, and I look across here and I see what's going on there, and I just can't watch it anymore. The, the thing is, I don't know. Last week I was here, but I got to, here too late to have my comment. But anyway, I witnessed who's uh, approving a $12,000 grant for the ATV park. I just was wondering, I know Milt, I brought the concerns to him. He's for West Kiwani. The rest of you probably don't even know what's going on there. I sent pictures, I don't know if you got them. Mm -hmm. uh, to you, Milt. I don't know what you think of that, but anyway, use past that thing just like that, boom. And I'm, I'm thinking, do you even know what you voted on? It's $12,000. I don't know what you're using the money for to maintain mud or 
He, I know he put rock in to fix some of that damage that I brought to the tension. He put a buffer zone along me. The trenches are still there from the old trail. And they're, that's what's eroding out my land. And I checked, uh, it's cost $200 a load for that big crush rock. That's the only way you could fix it. I need about 20 loads to fill that hole in. And I'm, they put in, I don't know how many loads back there. I'm just wondering where they're getting the money. Is it taxpayer dollars? Where's the money coming from? All thousand dollars wouldn't get you to her. And that we've been back there, he dumped, I don't know how many loads. Where did he get the equipment to put that in there? Is that the county's equipment? Can I use it? Are they gonna haul me rock? You know, I, I don't mind when somebody boats and something, maybe these guys go and research a little bit. You're giving money for supporting erosion. There's no doubt in my mind, that's all that is. You keep moving the trail, put up snow fence, it's all trench out. It's too dangerous to ride. He moved, they put orange snow fence here. They got the pictures. Then they start going up and down the ravines here. They're going to run out of land sooner or later. So you can't keep on moving it. And in the first place, I think you have to have that certified with the state. When you make an ATV park, the trails are specifically go here. You can't just keep on moving it. And then they take a bulldozer and they push up a bank so they can have fun riding on that by me while well, they puddle up all the water so that when you get these heavy rains it puddles up and then runs down in the ravine you didn't even plant that last field in the right. back there last thank, year thank you mr young that, that's because the, all the roads that's the three minutes okay for Good future enough. comments do what you want one is there anyone else who wishes no one else has signed up is there anyone else who wishes to speak to the board is there anyone else who wishes to speak to the board? Anyone else who wishes to speak? Seeing none, we'll continue on to number seven on the agenda, recognition on Rhonda Rummel's retirement. Um, Administrator Felt, is there somebody that's going to? Yes, okay. we will have uh, Chad Laluzern, who is the unit manager for right. the uh, children and families unit. Thank you, everyone. Um, I had the pleasure of being Rhonda's supervisor for one whole month prior to her retirement. Um, colleague for over 10 years. So any one of us that works in the unit be able to write this or say a, a little thank you for Rhonda. Um, so Rhonda Rummel served Kiwani County Human Services for 26 years in both the mental health and child welfare roles. The number of lives that she has touched is impossible to count. Her ability to stay the course in the face of tremendous adversity so that others could have a better safer, more dignified life is unparalleled. Rhonda's career ended on a high note as she recently received the Department of Children and Families um, Wisconsin Caring for Kids Award. So this is a state award that we nominated her for. There were six, seven participants that received this award from the state of Wisconsin and Rhonda was one of the seven nominees. So we went down to Madison early March here and she's presented that award by the Secretary of State. Um, so congratulations to Rhonda as you transition into retirement. Please know your dedication and level of service is so admired. Please accept the sincerest of wishes from all of us for a well-deserved and well-earned transition into re retirement and happiness and peace. You want to come up here and accept something from the, from the board? I'm very honored to accept this acknowledgement and was very thrilled to receive the Caring for Kids Award, which was a wonderful surprise. Um, in the 26 years that I've worked for Kiwani County, there's certainly been changes along the way, but one thing that's never changed is the dedicated and caring staff of human services. 
We are very fortunate in Kiwanee County to have their, our staff and our community partners through schools, law enforcement, uh, therapists, uh, private uh, services that support kids and families that make our community a safe and positive place to live. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appointments, we have none. Annual reports as requested by the board, Kiwani County Economic Development Corporation. If you would please uh, head to the microphone. Good evening. Um, thanks for having me again. Um, so this is hard to believe we're almost to the through one quarter of 2023. Uh, so it's moving fast. So I wanted to come in and give an update on kind of what we've been working on um, in the last few months, what we're looking at in the coming weeks and months ahead. Um, so with that, um, and it, please feel free to ask me any questions if you have any. Um, so starting off, uh, building off of um, our strategic planning efforts that we've done over the last year and a half, uh, visiting over 90 businesses, 90 business retention and expansion visits. Uh, we're continuing on our strategic actions, taking the feedback that we got through the BRE um, initiatives and uh, refining our, our strategic plan. So um, myself, along with our board of directors, um, invested some time earlier this year, kind of narrowing down um, where those top issues are. Um, and we've kind of broken those into two different tiers. So tier one are kind of the, the most important issues that we're, that we've concluded on with uh, tier two being kind of secondary or phase two to that. So um, within tier one, we uh, our number one priority is housing. Um, talent has been an overarching theme for a lot of our local businesses. Um, and we've met with a lot of these businesses and one solution that they want uh, to see more effort behind is improved housing development within the county so that we're attracting workforce. Um, improving quality of life and those types of things. Um, housing is a very big, broad topic. Um, so, you know, based on the housing study that the county had done through Bay Lakes planning and through the feedback through our BRE programs, we've kind of really concluded that we need life cycle housing in the county. So that's, um, you know, starter homes, rental units, senior housing and senior rental units as well. Um, if you recall from the housing study that was done a couple of years ago, uh, over two thirds of our homes in the county are 50 years or older. So improvement in the quality of our homes, uh, those are all kind of foundational economic development issues. Um, so that's our, our top priority. Uh, second is broadband and technology, keeping up with that, um, which the county has been very proactive at uh, pursuing. Uh, and number three is diversifying mid-sized businesses in the county. So, um, Getting there, uh, a lot of this are, are very broad topics. So now what we're doing is refining down more strategy in how we're gonna approach that. So where's the starting point with a lot of these? So, you know, with housing, it's defining the needs, the requirements to address it um, and developing options to address it. Um, with the broadband, like I said, the county is very um, proactive with that. Um, it's just maintaining awareness and being serving as that liaison outside of the community. And then di diversifying our mid-sized businesses is really going to come down to, um, do we want to do that internally, grow from within, uh, or do we want to attract new business or from outside, or do we want some kind of integrated version of that? So we're, we're working through some of those different things right now um, to better define those. Um, and our second tier of issues are education and schools, improved infrastructure, and then um, qual quality, of quality of life uh, challenges and becoming more of a destination um, for not only tourism, but also for businesses and um, residents in the long term. Um, coming up uh, right now, actually tomorrow, uh, I am spending the day uh, entertaining Missy Hughes, who is the CEO of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, uh, specifically around uh, some of these capacity issues that we need to address. 
uh, these different items that I just talked about, but also specifically to get out in front of the redevelopment of the nuclear power plant site. Um, nothing has really transpired with that yet. They haven't really started the decommissioning yet on that process, but you know, the projected timeline for that decommissioning is supposed to end in 2030 um, with the fuel spent fuel rods supposed to be removed sometime around 2050. So um, there's a lot of the logistics, a lot of regulatory information that has to go into that. So we're starting to uh, engage in those conversations at the state level uh, on how we can um, facilitate that and be prepared for when that time comes. So we're not trying to figure this out in eight years. Um, on March 27th, uh, we will be take, taking part in a meeting slash webinar uh, with Tammy Baldwin's office, specifically looking at funding opportunities to Wisconsin manufacturers, uh, specific to the Inflation Reduction Act and how that will impact Wisconsin businesses and our manufacturers here. Um, on March 30th, we are going to be holding the first of four quarterly roundtable events uh, that we will have throughout the year with the first one focusing on preparing for impact specifically about the Viking cruise ships that are going to be joined uh, visiting the county this year so this year we're scheduled for eight visits and another eight in 2024 so um, the average boatload uh, of passengers that that roughly equates to about 3200 people coming off of the boats into our communities uh, and what we have learned from other um, communities that have hosted cruises in the past, we'll have equally as many individuals coming to view the ships um, as passengers getting off of them. So um, that um, roundtable event will really focus on how do we prepare for that um, from a business standpoint so that our business owners aren't um, all of a sudden slammed and lose all of their inventory. How do they plan their supply chain so that they're ready for the next visit two weeks later? Um, how that impacts um, local municipalities in terms of traffic and police response times and emergency services and those types of things. So um, that uh, will be taking place at the Algoma Council Chambers uh, on March 30th, and there will be a Zoom link for anybody that can't physically make it to that event. Um, the other big event that we have coming up um, in April, yeah, actually we have two in April, um, is Egg Career Days. So that is a uh, biannual event that we have not held since prior to COVID. Uh, and it introduces all seventh and eighth grade students from all Kiwani districts, as well as Denmark and Southern Door schools to um, the different career clusters that are involved in agriculture. So everything from animal science to plant science, to the business side of it, to the financials, um, we currently are expecting about 947 students to participate uh, over two days. Uh, th that will be on April 18th and 19th. Um, and I have confirmation that the secretary for the Department of Workforce Development will be in attendance for that event. And we also have invitations to the governor, uh, as well as Missy Hughes with the, the state EDC. So um, my understanding is, is that um, Supporting and encouraging careers in agriculture is one of the governor's initiatives within um, his latest budget. Um, so the timing of it comes very well. It's also our leading industry within the county. Um, so why wouldn't we want to feature that uh, as well? Um, in addition, uh, on April 19th, overlap, uh, and 20th, we are participating in Dora and Kiwani Legislative Days, uh, which is a biannual event as well. Um, and this, if you're not familiar with it, basically a contingent of leaders and students from both counties go to Madison, meet with all of our different legislators and um, basically um, bend their ear on issues that are important to our area. Um, the, uh, myself and Administrator Felt are, are part of the steering committee for that event. Uh, and the top five issues that we've identified this year are water quality, housing, childcare, commercial fishing, and repair of the Potawatomi Tower. Um, when I say repair of the tower, that's not, um, they, they wanna, there's funding there to repair it, um, but the, the holdup with it is, is the governor wants to make it accessible so that they'd have to put a big ramp on it. And that would cost, I think $6 million was the price tag on that. Um, so it's just to repair it, not um, change its configuration. 
Um, with regard to housing, we are actually leading the position paper on that. Um, there is a, a Senate bill that is recommending the increase in housing tax credits that can be available. And 35% of the tax credits within that bill are specified for rural, um, rural housing development. Um, so we are going to try and make the ask that that percentage is um, higher than what it is. Um, so those are our issues. We are still looking for sponsors and volunteers to, to join that contingent. So if any of you are interested, please visit our website, talk to me uh, afterward, talk to Administrator Felt, and we'll get you on the list uh, of participants to join. Um, just other things that we are working on, we've recently um, hired a, a youth apprentice through the uh, apprenticeship program. And she is a uh, junior at Luxembourg Casco High School. She is going to be doing uh, our weekly newsletter and some other um, social media and marketing uh, efforts on our behalf. So in it, uh, our primary goal with that position is to try and get more of what we are doing out on a more regular basis. Um, awareness was a big topic that we had heard about uh, over the last year as well. Um, our BREs are continuing, um, so we're still continuing to meet with businesses, making sure our strategic priorities are aligned. Um, we have so far this year funneled one new business uh, through the county's business development loan program. So they, I think, are actually on the agenda later tonight as one of the resolutions. Uh, charter fishing operation out of Kiwani. Um, We've participated in the governor's economic conference back in February, uh, specifically trying to address and brainstorm ideas around housing development. So again, trying to hit on that top priority. Um, we are going to be hosting our annual meeting on May 10th, I believe at Portacol. Uh, it will be a breakfast meeting. Um, so that that meeting, um, I usually do a presentation similar to this, but it's more of a year in review. We usually will have a guest speaker um, do a presentation as well, who is yet to be determined. Um, so that is coming as well. And something that we are looking at for later this year, the EDC has um, basically been awarded a grant to be able to provide uh, economic development training for local leadership. Um, so we're looking at providing that so that it's geared more towards government officials, government leaders, so the county board or city councils or um, local government leaders. And we're looking at possibly holding that um, training in September. Um, that is put through or put on by the state uh, Economic Development Corporation so that um, there'll be more updates on that as we move through the year. Um, so with that, I think that's kind of what we've been up to here over the last few months. So All does right. anybody have any questions? Questions for Mr. Nelson? All right. Thank you. We Thank picked you. a good month to be on the agenda. So I appreciate the timing. Uh, administrator's report. Thank you. And actually the timing worked uh, not too well because I was about to introduce the board to our new public information officer slash tourism coordinator, Josh Visti. Uh, he took a couple photos and then he ran out the out the room. So the the gentleman with the hat and making the photos, that's our new public information officer and tourism coordinator. He started on the 27th of February, is already getting stuff out on social media and will be doing a number of videos and the like as well. But uh, anytime you want to just stop into the administrator's office and introduce yourself. Other than that, I have nothing else at this time, Mr. Chair. Very good, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to committee reports. Under committee reports, I do want to go back to the administrator and ask on the bug tussle. Correct. I have uh, had questions on this and I, uh, on the one hand, I mean, obviously it's a, it appears from what I am hearing, it is a dispute between a subcontractor and a contractor that the county does business with. But obviously there's, if, uh, if it's getting to me, there's a certain amount, not that I'm the last person in the yep. county to hear things, but I'm not the first. And uh, so there's a certain amount of public interest. I would like uh, if you can give us any, since that was brought up last month, if you can give us any information on that, any anything further. I would also uh, have been asked about the uh, 
I would like to clarify a bit the motion that was made by the board previously regarding bug tussle and not drawing on funds. And um, just wanna make a further clarification on that, that those payments were delayed because the funds were not drawn. Correct. And so I, they were not turned over. So I, you know, I'll, I'll start with the last clarify. one first, if that's okay, Mr. Uh, Chair. That'd be great. Certainly. Uh, the amendment that ha that was done back in, gosh, was it September? Uh, it was it was later, late last year, and the the amendment was requested in that uh, Bug Tussle had not. There was a loan of $1.3 million, and at the time they had not drawn all of their funds. And so uh, from an administrative standpoint, uh, the request was just to delay the start of payments for one month, but the amount of payments would be same, the interest would still be the same. So it the, the thought from an administrative standpoint is not that they needed the extra time. It's just from an administrative standpoint, they had not pulled all of their all of those funds out yet. Uh, they have. They continue to make timely monthly payments. So from that standpoint, there is no issue with the county as to bug tussle and making their payments. Before we move on to the next point, sure. just to make sure that I get to, that I'm that I'm very clear on this, the just so the public is clear on this, those those monies that were not drawn on, those have to be, those are for specific projects as well. They, those funds couldn't be just directed wherever. I mean, they have to be used, they were for particular projects. From, from the contract with Bug Tussle, that the, the money that was being drawn from was for projects that are within the, the contract, which is therefore the installation of conduit and fiber within Kiwani County. So, so it couldn't be spent on something else. Right, but that's pretty broad. So it could be could be used for any of those uh, fiber projects that are ongoing. Correct, because they are, well, within the contract. So within the contract, it was for 60 gonna, plus miles of fiber. Okay, so I'm gonna take you into the next area where you were mm -hmm. gonna go doing this in reverse order. Um, if it were needed, those funds could be used to pay uh, any vendors that are owed. That would, uh, if, that if, if that's what Bud Tussle that. wanted to do, knows. they could do so. Okay. So now as for the payments and uh, uh, following the inquiry by Supervisor Augustine, I did contact Bug Tussle regarding the, uh, the outstanding payments that were being, um, that were being um, declared by uh, the subcontractor H and H. Uh, I had had conversations with Bug Tussle. Uh, they have provided me records that uh, over the course of the project, they have made uh, approximately three point three million dollars worth of payments to H and H for work. There is uh, some disputes as to what was overages in costs. And that is something that is between Bug Tussle and H and H. Um, I don't want to necessarily get into too many specifics because, again, that is not really our our area. In that, uh, if H and H decides that they want to follow a a a legal course against Bug Tussle, they are able to do so. The one thing that I communicated uh, very clearly is that. I do not want any of the uh, what would be considered dispute between a contractor and a subcontractor that it would prevent Bug Tussle from uh, honoring their contract, which is that they would have fiber in roughly by the end of 2023. They have assured me that 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 will not be a that will not be the case. They have already contracted with another subcontractor to do that work. In fact, they have um, they have done work with five other subcontractors for various projects throughout the state, and this is the only one that they have a dispute with. And so, as for what all those disputes are, again, I am not privy to specifically all of those things going on, but from the county standpoint. They have assured me, and I have 
and I have expressed very clearly that we expect them to honor their contract and have things done by the end of 23. And I just want to clarify further. Um, to this point, to my knowledge, all contracts, all um, uh, markers that were set, all deadlines, uh, we've, we've had no issue, to my knowledge. Correct. As well as uh, there have been no issues regarding uh, principal and interest payments to the loan funds that we have given to Bug Tussle. All payments have been made on time, and at least at this present time, to my knowledge, uh, the projects continue to move forward as scheduled. Okay, so all milestones have been met. Is there anything further? Uh, yes, Supervisor Teske. On the Highway Solid Waste Committee minutes, January 12th, on the last page of those minutes, uh, in the middle there were they had a SMA, County C, County L, Clyde Hill Road. It was motioned by Joe Lukes to approve the SMA for County Trunk Highway KB Buck Creek Bridge replacement. I think that's from up above. So I think that motion needs to be clarified. Uh, Supervisor Poppy. Can, can you give me a, what was the reference again? Um, help me get to the uh, right January page, please. January 12th minutes. Okay. The last page of those minutes. Or you had County yep. Trunk. Give, give, give Supervisor Poppy a moment, please. He's, uh, he's trying to get there. <laughs> we got all night. Well, I do. Okay, uh, could you restate your uh, question again, Supervisor Teske? Now that he's on the right page, um, I don't know if I'm on the right page. Kind of in the middle of there, motion by Joe Lukes to approve the SMA for County Trunk Highway KB Buck Creek. I think that's replace. That's the motion that was made up above. So this one probably should say County Trunk Highway L, the Clive Hill Road. We can correct that. You issue. just have to okay. change the wording there a little bit. Okay, we can do that. Sure. All right, Supervisor Pop, you get that taken care of unless we've got it already. All right, thank you. Any other questions on uh, uh, Supervisor Lazanski? Yes, I have a question. This would be for Cindy for um, public health. So on the um, uh, the meeting notes from their February 13th, um, there was an extension on the one COVID grant for $173,000 and to be used by the end of this year. So I'm wondering if you will, you um, if you have that designated for, you'll be able to use that up and just how, and I have a, another question then too after. Sure, I'd be happy to answer that. So that is our ELC grant. It is specific to epidemiology based services for COVID. And we were able to carry over about $170,000 and that will go to continuing to pay the staff in our office that work towards COVID. So I have um, certain designated hours for our community health educator and our registered nurse. And then also a portion goes to our administrative assistant who does COVID work. It also pays for all of our contract tracers. So we still have two on staff that work for contact tracing. Um, and then in addition, monies were put away that could be used towards um, IT services. So Ross and I have worked together over the last couple of years to do a lot of upgrades on different forms of IT throughout the county that we can um, cover through that grant. Okay, well, that, that's nice to hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I thought, you know, it's a big chunk of money yet that, you know, you want to get it used. So then my other question is, I noticed that then in the um, minutes from March 13th, there were two more deaths. And so I'd like to kind of get your take on COVID now, because, um, you know, what these deaths are, they like, you know, older people, people that are health compromised, maybe not vaccinated. And also, um, I know a young man who's in his 20s, he was healthy, athletic, he had COVID three times, and he just can't get back to normal. So kind of what's your take on where, you know, where we'll end up? I think we're all just like kind of living with it. And I see that's yeah. the way we're going. Yep. So COVID continues in the community. We're averaging somewhere between 10 and 15 cases a week 
typically. Um, and those are the cases that end up going into a medical facility for testing that we're notified on. So there's a fair amount of people that do the home tests. We do not get notified on the home tests necessarily. So the ones that I'm counting are the ones that go through healthcare practitioners or through hospitals. Um, specifically, your question in the deaths, the two deaths um, that were within the last month were people who were older and had significant health issues. So um, both had been vaccinated as well, but they were uh, fairly immunocompromised getting that. So the cases that we're seeing uh, that end up in the hospital are quite sick. And I think, you know, we're not going to see COVID go away. It obviously is here to stay. So we're going to continue to see those numbers. But um, the numbers that we're seeing right now are nowhere near where we were at a few years ago. And I think it's manageable and the community is adjusting well to how to do that. You know, they're not fighting us on understanding that you stay home for five days when you have it, that kind of thing. It just continues. We have seen vaccinations decrease, though. Okay. Any other question, Supervisor Teske? Then uh... on the ag and extension minutes from February eighth, item number four. It probably should say Supervisor Lozanski to approve the January eleventh minutes, not February eighth. Okay. We'll make that. Do we know where we are? They just met on the 8th of February. That should probably say January 11th. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor Haskey? Yeah, uh, Melissa Annoy asked me to mention that um, they did an internal posting for the CCS crisis coordinator position and that the children, the waiver position is posted externally and they're hoping to get interviews done by the end of the month. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, comments on the uh, minutes, uh, the reports, all of the committee reports? Uh, Supervisor Yonke. I figured you'd ask me here pretty soon. Well, I was about to. Okay. Uh, it looks like this year, it's the second best year for attendance yeah. at the Winter Park. Uh, there's over 13,600 tubers in between uh, six and 700 on the ski hill. Waiting for the final numbers from the association yet, yeah. so. Very good. And uh, skiing was even going last weekend, I understand. Yes. So pretty remarkable. Uh, all of those that were a part of getting that uh, all worked out and making everything go, I think, uh, you know, uh, everybody really went the extra mile on that. And I appreciate, uh, I appreciate Mr. Myers. He really went the extra mile and uh, uh, Parks and Rec uh, Committee and also uh, Winter Park Association, everybody was able to come together and get things worked out in a positive manner for the for the uh, citizens. So, yeah, you know. the only. Oh, and I forgot Mr. Depo. He put in a lot of time, too. I heard a sound <laughs> over there. I'm sure he wasn't trying to draw attention to himself. This, this is the problem. This is the problem with, you know, when you list people, you inevitably forget someone. And there were far too many people involved in that for me to remember everyone. But um, and far too many phone calls for me to remember all of them either. But uh, people were really concerned. And I'm glad that we were able to get everything going in a good direction. The only downfall this year was no ice skating. Well, unless you got that next year. You know, yeah, unless you want to put in some equipment to freeze that ice somehow, you, and, you know, the weather just didn't cooperate on that snow they can make and so forth. But uh, yeah, really a, a good year up there. So, okay. Any other questions on uh, committee reports, minutes? All right. Well, I just have to say, uh, occasionally I'll have people uh, comment to me, you know, or say, you know, gee, to those supervisors, you know, they... They just pass things through or they read through these things. They do their homework. Uh, they should watch. I mean, you guys went through these minutes uh, more thoroughly than uh, I could have ever imagined uh, all the uh, questions here. And uh, so very good. We'll move on then. Uh, first reading of ordinance. We have none. So we will move on to uh, consideration of resolutions. I don't see Mr. Every here tonight. Oh, I'll be darned. Well, I guess we're ready for the resolution. We'll have to carry on without him. He must, uh, he must. 
he must figure this one wasn't uh, didn't require the big guy coming in, huh? <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Well, anyway. A resolution to purchase highway equipment, 2018 Toyota uh, model 8FGU32LP powered forklift. Fiscal impact, 33,637 from highway internal funds. All right, we have a motion by Supervisor Volenweider. We have, that's already seconded by Supervisor Romden. You gotta be quick on the uh, tapping on these, uh, on these tablets. Um, is there discussion? Uh, Supervisor Swaggo. Thank you, Chairman. So what is the status of the, the lift or the, uh, 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 the forklift being replaced? It says it's old, but how many hours and what would it cost to re, re, uh, repair it, maintain it? What are the costs? Okay, it's a, a 1960 model. Correct, that's what Correct. it says here. Okay, and the parts are almost nil to none. It was a military, um, it came from the military. So it was a um, surplus, I shouldn't say gift, but it came, I think it was a dollar or whatever to acquire this machine back in, I'm going to say late 70s, we'll get, maybe. Perhaps sell it for $2 now. So it will go on uh, on the auction on Wisconsin's auction market. Um, Are you interested in purchasing Supervisor no, Spiegel? Sir. <laughs> I don't want to buy the new one. I want to see I guess, this I one guess uh, a basic lay. We use it for a lot of heavy lifting and everything is just wore out, you know, so it's become not safe. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Supervisor Teske? Thank you. I just have a question. Yeah. Are all forklifts LP powered? No, no, no. Some are diesel. Some I believe electric. there may be diesel engines in them. Um, this is run on LP gas because it's run inside majority of the time. Okay. Uh, some are gas, I believe. I don't think there's many out there with gas anymore, but um, I'm sure someday it'll be electric. Who knows? <laughs> oh, there are electric. Okay, there you go. You didn't know it, but I am an experienced forklift operator. Very good. Does it? Back does in my it, college days. Does it just run <laughs> on an LP tank? Correct. Yeah, they get the LP tank. Where do they go for the LP tanks? For those, they must have to must have a vendor somewhere in the Probably area, lakes or someplace. I don't know. But uh, tanks go on the back, and uh, is that is that tank concealed or is it out in the open on the forklift? I Typically believe you can see it in the picture. No. Yeah. I don't see it on the Toyota here, but uh, so that must be underneath. Believe me, it's there. That's what it runs on. Well, is there a closer? There must be closer LP than Luxembourg. Yeah, track okay. supply. Yeah. All right. Other questions? All right. And uh, you may register your vote. Sixteen yes, one no. Motion carries. All right. Consideration of ordinance read at previous county board meeting. There are none. Communications, resolutions from other counties. From Kenosha Green Lake, Marathon, Trempolo, and Crawford, a resolution to request the state of Wisconsin to revise the current real estate transfer fees revenue sharing formula. From Clark in Columbia counties, recommending revisions to state wind energy regulations. And from Green Lake, um, request the state of Wisconsin to use a portion of the 2023 budgetary surplus for the maintenance, repair, and replacement of county truck highway system. All right, thank you. Are there uh, Kiwani County events? Supervisor Kroll. Um, I have two. There is a skin cancer screening going on Saturday, April 29th from 8.30 till noon at the Prevea Luxembourg Health Center. Um, they're teaming up with um, the Kiwani Health Department. And then I have another one May 20th is a walk um, at the Brimmer Park and the health department um, is putting this on. And Cindy, maybe if you wanna just talk a little more about it because I think there's some involvement with um, the pheasant, correct? Some of the proceeds.
So May 20 at the health department and parks and promotion will be sponsoring um, a trail walk. And that trail walk is going to have a registration. We don't, we typically everything we do is free, uh, but this one's gonna have a registration on it. All proceeds that we do raise will go to the Bremer Park Inclusive Playground um, group. So that's the group that if you remember came in maybe a year, year and a half ago and presented to you about putting that playground in down at Bremer Park. So we're gonna try to help raise some funds for that. All right, very good, thank you. Any others? Uh, Supervisor Lazansky. So um, on also on April 29th is the spring fling at Lake Haven Hall. Conscious Pilot plays. It is free. They're playing 7 to 11. Doors open at 5. Sponsored by the Alumni Fest. We're hoping that this is a year where we finally have a, a kind of break even with our money for funding events that we'll be able to start giving back to the community. So we're already talking about that. So um, that'll be coming up. Thank Very good. you. Thank you. Any others? All right. Uh, comments from the chair. Um, last month, we did have a motion come out of executive session. And uh, just to give you an update, we have retained outside representation as was approved and requested by the board. There is nothing more to report at this time. Um, the next meeting dates you have April 11th and May 16th are scheduled already. We would normally, if we followed our typical, we would go to June 20th. However, there are a couple of supervisors, myself included, who have a conflict on that. And so I was going to propose, would it be, uh, would it work for everyone if we were to go to June 13th? Is that, that does not work. Um, what does work before June 19th? Uh, June 6th is probably too, well, we could do June 6th. I will not be here on June 6th. You would not be here on June 6th. Okay. Um, Mr. What Chair, about, we yeah. usually, we usually, uh, or there have been times over the year that we have skipped the July meeting. We could possibly right. skip the June and, well, and go with July. I'd like to have it scheduled in case. What okay. about uh, June 12th? June 12th. All right, let's get a motion before somebody changes their mind. You can't do the 12th. Nothing on the 12th through the 16th. Um, what about, uh, did we try June 5th? I'm out. You were out the whole week? The first three days. First three days. What about? 19th. The 19th, no, I'm gone that whole week. Um, I. That entire week, uh, June 19th, and I don't, uh, let's see here. Well, we could do, we could do June 28th. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Hmm? <laughs> there, there we go. How about June 28th? Well, there's a couple of supervisors would be out on that one. Would June 28th work? June 28th? Huh? Yeah. Does the 28th work? June 28th. Can I get a motion on that? 27th wouldn't help. A couple of us would still be unavailable. 28th. Mr. Depo wouldn't be, but we're going to lose someone. Do you have a substitute in your place? Okay. I'll make Su the motion. Su Supervisor Poppy makes the motion. Uh, Supervisor Dell for June 28th, June, Wednesday, June 28th. It's summer. I can make a Wednesday work then. Uh -huh. And we will do that at our regular time, 6 p.m. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you. All right, this is your chance. Motion to adjourn. Supervisor Wollenweider, second Supervisor Langto. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. All opposed? Motion carries.